one. Welcome everyone to today's webinar, Five Patient-Centric Ways to Improve Self-Pay Revenue. On behalf of Becker's Healthcare, thank you for joining us today. Before we begin, I'm going to walk through just a few quick housekeeping instructions. So first, we will begin today's webinar with a presentation and we will have time at the end of the hour for a question and answer session. So you can go ahead and submit any questions that you have throughout the presentation by typing them into that Q&A box that you should see on your screen. Today's session is also being recorded, so it will be available after the event, and you can use the same link that you use to log into today's webinar to access that recording. And if at any time you don't see your slides moving or have trouble with the audio, just try refreshing your browser, and you can also submit any technical questions into the Q&A box. We're here to help with those. With that, I'm pleased to welcome today's speakers. First, we have Bonnie Causey. Bonnie is Director of Revenue Operations and Patient Accounting for Health First. She is responsible for all aspects of the financial journey after the initial admission through collections process, whether it be insurance collections, self-pay collections, or bad debt review and placement. Bonnie started her career in the healthcare industry in 1988 and over the last 30 plus years has held positions in all areas of the revenue cycle management. Next, we have Stephen Wing. Steve plays a pivotal role in developing tech-enabled solutions to drive the highest return on investment for HBCS clients as Vice President of Operations. Since rejoining HBCS in 2014, Steve has been responsible for leading the development of solutions that deliver an exceptional patient experience, optimize collections, and enhance accounts receivable management. He earned his bachelor's degree in international business from Goldie Beacom College in Wilmington, Delaware, and is an active member in HFMA, AAHAM, and other professional organizations. And finally, John Rogers. John is Assistant Vice President of Self-Pay Operations at HBCS, where he leads client engagement and patient account resolution teams on behalf of health systems throughout the U.S., he has 15 years experience in hospital revenue cycle and customer service operations. John holds a bachelor's degree in political science from Pennsylvania State University and a certificate in project management from Villanova University. Bonnie, Stephen, and John, thank you again for being here today. And Steve, I'll go ahead now and turn the floor over to you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining today's webinar. HBCS and Health First are very excited to share with you a few key insights towards improving your self-pay revenue. Establishing a partnership with a revenue cycle provider builds a strong foundation towards mutual collaboration and also thought leadership. HBCS has exclusively served healthcare providers for 35 years with a focus on three primary services, virtual registration, insurance reimbursement, and self-pay early out resolution. We have three CBO locations with 35% of our workforce working virtually prior to COVID-19. Our analytics and technology help power our integrated workflows, but our real ability to execute lies within our 500 plus revenue cycle professionals, driving success yielding over 3 billion in reimbursement annually to our provider partners. Let's talk a little bit about our partnership with Health First. The revenue cycle leaders at Health First engage with HBCS to provide a comprehensive customer service and patient resolution solution, leveraging industry leading talent and technology solutions. Achievement of cost effectiveness and measurable results is paramount for providers, even more so today as we begin to emerge through the pandemic. HBCS has experienced delivering patient resolution, digital patient communications, propensity to pay segmentation, insurance eligibility, and also joint financial assistance options with Health First led to early and sustained results. I'd like to share with you a few highlights. Number one, our self-pay collections, the hospital self-pay collections improved by 35% while reducing self-pay uh, volume inventory by over 12%. We implemented a full-featured self-service portal through an integrated IVR and also a full-featured patient portal with over 6.1 million in annual transactions through this self-service platform. 
We also identified 1.2 million in insurance eligible claims in the first 90 days. But what we really feel proud about is we able to increase patient satisfaction through expanded payment plan options, expediting account resolution, and broadening of financial assistance program discussions post-billing. Next, I'd like to turn things over to Bonnie Causey from Health First, who has been an invaluable partner throughout our journey towards self-pay improvement. Thank you, Steve. Good afternoon, all. I'm Bonnie Causey, Director of Patient Accounting for Health First. Before we go any further into the presentation, let me tell you a little bit about Health First. Health First is a private, not-for-profit, integrated delivery network. We are located on the east coast of Florida, about 45 minutes east of Disney World. We're the home to Kennedy Space Center, Port Canaveral, and Cocoa Beach. As an integrated delivery network, we're able to deliver care to patients in, the, in our community at all levels of the healthcare continuum. We have four acute care facilities with 868 beds, a pediatric ER with a level two NICU. We also have a physicians group of over 400 physicians, a health plan, and an outpatient wellness division, along with 9,000 associates, all of whom are committed to putting our patients first. But enough about us, let's dive into self-pay revenue collections. Today, we'll be looking at some challenges of self-pay revenue collections and the steps that Health First has taken to ensure we are putting our patients first in the collection conversations. The overall challenge is to understand how we can engage with our patients in a more patient-centric manner so that we can elevate the patient experience. We have to remember that clinical experiences are not only experiences that matter to patients, the financial experience matters as well. By listening to our patients' overall situation and considering their needs in our decision-making process, we are likely to find that patients will readily participate in becoming part of the solution to the growing self-pay issues that exist in our industry. At Health First, we've identified five areas of opportunity to ensure we are pivoting towards our patient-centric operations. Those, these improvements opportunities are strengthening our patient access process, leveraging screening and propensity to pay scoring workflows, improving communications with our patients as well as our digital experience, identifying collaborative outsourcing options, and optimizing our workflows for charity care and customized financial assistance protocols. Let's look at some of these challenges. Our goal at Health First is to meet patients where they are. When I say this, what I'm talking about is focusing our efforts on trying to understand what works best for our patients. We found if we spend time trying to figure out the right solution for the patient, they will be more apt to help us. So how do we offer options that are patient-centric, meet the needs of the patients where they are, and remain successful in our collections? Is it a no contact option at all levels of service? Do we give the patient the ability to control their own financial experience? Patients want us to understand and care about their individual priorities and situations. So how do we use the tools that we have available to us to better prepare for discussions that fit their needs? So let me ask you, how often are your patients shocked at what they owe? To help remove the surprise, we offer cost transparency to our patients and start the discussions early in the dialogue with them. Surprises are only good when they are in the form of gifts, not bills. As we are having those conversations with our patients, are we really listening to understand their struggles? Do we know the propensity to pay information before the conversations? And are we using the information to guide those conversations? Lastly, COVID-19, it's changed the way we do business in the landscape of our patients' lives. We are dealing with patients who are juggling multiple priorities, including homeschooling, childcare issues, and income changes, job losses that are impacting our community, and lastly, information about patient responsibility and testing that is, that is not accurate or is misleading. So now that we have talked about some of our challenges, Let's look at how we tackle each of them at Health First.
First, we worked to enhance the patient registration process. For our scheduled patients, we provide options to our patients that are complete to complete the registration in a no contact environment. This allows for patients to complete the registration on their schedule in the comfort of their own home. Not only can they complete the necessary registration work, but they can receive a cost estimate, sign all their forms, pay their patient responsibility, all without contact and from the privacy of their own living room. Registrars are still available if the patient opts out of the contactless experience and if the patient has any questions. We utilize all available software solutions to verify identity, addresses, and insurance information prior to the patient's arrival for services and correct as necessary. Working by exception to address the errors helps us meet service deliverables that are standard for the area. We have a robust QA process and provide real-time feedback to our patient access teams for immediate review and correction of information. So what about your EDs? ED registration always poses a challenge. We utilize eligibility and propensity to pay tools with each transaction. The expectation, the expectation is that each patient will receive a service estimate and registrars will attempt collections up front. At the very least, this will provide the patient with information to start the discussion early in the account life cycle. To address our inpatient population, we have a specially trained team of financial counselors. The goal of this team is to speak to each inpatient prior to discharge. To prep for those conversations, they will pull propensity to pay information to gain insight into the patient's financial picture and verify insurance coverage. With that information they have gathered, they, pre prepare, they prepare to sit down with the patient, review the information, and find the right solution with the patient's interests in mind. The hope is that transparency early in the interaction can lead to an informed and pleasant patient experience. If the financial counselors are unable to collect at the time of service, our goal is to set the next team up for success. We encourage our patients to use the financial counselors as their financial lifeline should they get home and have questions related to the bill or the next steps in the process. So John, can you give us some insight on how HPCS leverages screening and propensity to pay workflows? Absolutely, thank you, Bonnie. I'm John Rogers, AVP of Self-Pay at HPCS, and I've had the pleasure of working closely with Bonnie and Health First over the course of our partnership. Regarding Bonnie's overview of patient financial engagement on the front end, it's important that these strategies initiated by patient access are complemented by financial clearance analytics and intelligent workflows throughout the self-pay cycle. So a successful outsource partnership will round out and enhance your internal processes through integrated technology and expertise that might be cost prohibitive and challenging to coordinate otherwise. For example, all accounts placed for collection of patient responsibility should not only be scrubbed for demographic errors and updates, but also evaluated for presumptive charity in order to ensure continuity of care, maximize the health system's community benefit, and of course, ultimately reduce bad debt. An automated presumptive workflow leverages analytics to make adjudication timely, accurate, and seamless for both the health system and the patient. Also, a flexible solution will include a propensity to pay engine that not only scores and segments guarantor accounts, but actually dynamically drives the billing and outreach workflow, especially within your digital communications and contact center platform. So ultimately, the goal is to make sure you're having the right financial conversation with the right patient at the right time in order to maximize payments and ultimately brand loyalty and patient satisfaction. It's important to proactively offer tailored payment plans up front and induce enrollment in auto pay across all your payment channels in order to unlock revenues within both the after insurance and true self pay AR and minimize default and rework. And lastly, your solution should bridge the gaps in existing internal processes by identifying and billing missed coverage, confirming bankruptcies in estates, and then flowing these updates back to your patient accounting system timely so they are available for 
the in-source team uh, to continue their financial engagement with the patient. So now looking at a comprehensive financial clearance protocol, we also need to uh, look at a robust patient communications platform that meets patients where they are and offers them the opportunity to engage with your brand through the channel they find most comfortable and convenient. And increasingly that means digital options like secure text messaging. Although healthcare was slower to adopt this technology than other sectors, largely due to TCPA, FDCPA, and HIPAA concerns, recent regulatory guidance, improved front-end consent and opt-out protocols, and then just the evolution of the technology itself have actually led to a threefold increase in adoption in healthcare since 2016. And with good reason, studies show upwards of 90% of consumers are willing to receive text messages from businesses. And that those born after 1980 in particular, millennials, check their phones an average of 150 times per day. That's a huge opportunity to engage patients in the financial conversation. Your tech solution can be the tip of the digital wedge that includes e-statements, a branded portal with responsive design, and an interactive voice response system. And then a single sign-on or SSO solution, such as we're currently implementing at Health First, can make navigation of this integrated platform even more frictionless and intuitive for patients, as familiar as their experience on other consumer sites. Then lastly, on the back end, a payment gateway connected by API to your merchant accounts with associated remit and reconciliation processes can support automated cash posting with minimal errors and manual interventions. All of this drives revenue and efficiency. We've actually seen the success of this approach in our own experience with Health First. Since deploying these digital solutions, we've seen a 38% increase in utilization of our patient portal. And this in turn has led to a 69% increase in payments through mobile or tablet devices. And of course, part of the solution is providing the analytics around usage, click-throughs, et cetera. The convenience of digital platforms becomes clear when you see the time of day when patients are actually making payments. So on our own platform, a full 33% of payments come in after hours between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. So clearly, if you build it, they will come. And whether your patients are old school and still prefer to write a check to a lockbox using a remit coupon from a mailed statement or clicking through a secure text message, meeting patients where they are means giving them the exact solution they find most convenient and comfortable in order to maximize payments and overall satisfaction and ultimately brand value. So with all this digital talk, we shouldn't lose sight of the importance of an effective patient statement. At the end of the day, the vast majority of your patients will still get at least a detail bill in their mailbox. It's important that your statement design therefore complements your other communication channels in terms of feature functionality and aesthetics. And whether driving digital engagement and self-service options or driving checks to your lockbox, statement design is still crucial. So on that note, back to you, Bonnie. Now, I don't know about you, but I've become the go-to person in my family when it comes to explanation of benefits and hospital bills. And in that, it started me thinking, most patients don't really understand what they're billing billed for, or when they get a complicated billing statement, it only adds to their frustration. So at Health First, we tackled that challenge by taking everything back to basic. We redesigned the layout of our statements to be more aesthetically pleasing to the eye. We customized verbiage based on where the account was in the workflow. We changed our language to support patient understanding and common use terms. We improved design to guide patients to payment portals that were easy to access from any platform, as well as options, including some old school options of snail mail. We provide clear information on our payment options and resources that patients can tap into in order to get assistance with resolving the bill. Next up on our to-do list is to consolidate our physician statements with our hospital statements into one combined bill. But let's look at how we streamlined our processes regarding assistance for the uninsured. In recent years, we've all seen a rise in the self pay population, as well as the underinsured. To help us conquer this one, 
we encouraged our teams to work one-on-one -on -one with the patient to understand their specific situation. Utilization of available tools are used to engage with the patient early in the journey. Accounts are reviewed to determine presumptive scoring and define protocols that will work best for the patient. This prepares our team for that patient conversation. We engaged with HBCS to better understand and design customized workflows at the partner level and enhance conversations with the patient. Once in the appropriate workflow, we consider all outstanding balances for the patient and use that as leverage to make a patient connection. We encourage our patients to partner with us to find solutions that are acceptable and leave the patient with a positive financial experience, which translates into increasement in the patient satisfaction. And we finish with follow through to the, for the patient, being sure to meet any deliverable we commit to during that interaction. Offering the most appropriate solution to the patients will result in better outcomes for all parties and lets the patient know we are interested in the entire patient picture, not just the collections aspect. To be successful with this, you must identify effective collaborative outsourcing options. An instrumental part of meeting our patient where they are is ensuring we've selected an outsourcing partner that is a right fit for our patients. They had to be willing to take time to get to know our patients and what their needs were. Selecting partners with the patient in mind results in increased collections, increased patient satisfaction, and success for the organization. The right partner had to be willing to op and open to listen and collaborate with our patients, as well as our organization to present solutions that were flexible, balanced, and sensible. They had to develop programs and protocols that fit the organization's objectives to ensure we meet our, our patients where they are. The workflows must allow for discussions early in the process so that educated decisions can be made on how to process accounts and what protocols are best for the patient. Lastly, we needed a partner that was willing to proactively identify the right tools for the patient to facilitate easy resolution of the outstanding balances regardless of where, whether it was approved payment plan methodology, patient financing, state eligibility assistance, or financial assistance. The ultimate goal is to have a partnership that is a win-win-win for all, the patient, the organization, and the outsourcing partner. Let's turn it over to Steve to talk about measuring the patient experience. Bonnie, thank you, Bonnie. Uh, the patient experience, right? The patient experience is everywhere. Um, the patient experience often reminds me of a trending topic on Twitter. The breadth and scope of the patient experience from both clinical and billing perspectives understandably is included in the large majority of, you know, so many topics that we discuss during these industry learning uh, environments and events. We generally boil down our self-pay approach regarding the patient experience in the four key areas, workforce management and technology, communications and engagement, focus on quality and productivity measurement and monitoring. Earlier, John and Bonnie discussed the patient communications from a digital engagement angle. Next, I'll share an approach around workforce management and quality. So centralized workforce management, what does that mean? Centralized workforce management responsibilities and associated technologies allow frontline customer service supervisors to focus on employee engagement, individual and team productivity, and KPIs that are critical and relevant to your organization. A few examples of workforce responsibilities include monitoring scheduled adherence, time and attendance, uh, vacation planning, and all of this is to keep uh, productivity leakage you know, to a minimum. In addition, a workforce manager plays a central role in call routing decisions based on the intraday you know, call analysis. From a technology standpoint, technology solutions provide tools and analytics diving deeper than ever before into the understanding of the patient customer behavior. This, these workforce optimization solutions include 100% digital call recording and uh, agent screen capture, 
uh, on-call performance analytics, and uh, just increasingly just such a unique and uh, neat feature, speech and voice analytics from both the patient and the customer service agent. In essence, you're really giving us the power and the insight into what's being said, and also more importantly, how it's being said. Technology, when integrated, effectively captures the why in many aspects as accounts move through a typical 120-day self-pay cycle. Some of the things that we can identify through the technology utilizing some of the tools are top questions that are asked by the patient, some of the reasons for non-payment, concerns around quality of care, and then the effectiveness by customer service agents in the resolution of patient questions. Now, this will bring me to our next item, which will be a focus on quality. A quality assurance program is a nonstop continuous improvement methodology. It's all encompassing. Our HBCS quality program is at the core of our monthly incentive program. It serves as positive reinforcement and training improvement feedback to our resolution specialists. Through our integrated quality management workforce tools, we can provide real-time coaching in addition to identifying individual and group training needs. Quality scores are published to promote transparency and accountability while maintaining a collaborative process with everyone that's involved. The transparent collaboration exists throughout our key players, including our independent QA team, operations management, and resolution specialists, as we calibrate on a monthly, quarterly basis with our client partners. As you can see, this quality approach, not only is it at the core of our program, but it, at its essence, it provides our insight and ability to be able to provide the various forms of feedback to our team members vertically and throughout our operations, and ultimately providing that feedback back to our client partners. Next, I'll turn things back to Bonnie for a few final thoughts. Thanks, Steve. So let's look at the takeaways from today's presentation. The five patient-centric ways to improve self-pay revenue collections are strengthen the patient access process to start the patient responsibility conversations early, leverage screening and propensity to pay scoring workflows to advance accounts toward the right solution for the patient, enhance the digital experience for the patient that allows a patient-friendly communications and positively impacts the patient experience. Identify partners that are collaborative, flexible, and interested in not only your organization's needs, but more importantly, what the patient needs. And optimize workflows for financial assistance and charity care to once again ensure we know early in the lifespan of the account what would be best for our patients. Thank you very much for spending time with us today. Let's open it up for questions. Thank you, Bonnie, Steve, and John for such a great presentation today. As Bonnie mentioned, we'll now go ahead and begin that question and answer session. Again, you can go ahead and submit any of those questions you have um, by typing them into the Q&A chat box on your webinar console. So it looks like we've got some questions in there and we'll go ahead and get started. So first, how are you using scoring? So segmentation and prioritization in your workflow. So this is John at HBCS. Scoring and segmentation is actually uh, an integrated uh, part of our outbound strategies. So leveraging analytics from various data streams, uh, we drive our outbound strategies to make the uh, outbound calls to patients at the appropriate time in the account cycle uh, based on numerous data points uh, within our system reflecting historical payment behavior, contact preferences, et cetera, uh, account status, as well as, of course, the propensity to pay uh, analytics that we are uh, pulling in through channel partnerships and other uh, data streams. So it's a fully integrated solution and automated. <laughs> Thank you, John. Next, we have what percentage of payments are being made online? So uh, historically, uh, we saw that roughly 
50% um, of payments were coming through our customer engagement or contact center, roughly 10% through voice response system, uh, and another 50% uh, through lockbox driven by statements. Uh, and then we're seeing increasing uptake in digital payments uh, with clients where we've uh, implemented those digital solutions, upwards of 35 to 40% of payments are coming through self-service digital channels. And we expect that trend to continue, of course. Looks like we've got another one here, might be this last one. So how do you handle getting consent for text and email communications? I'll take that, this is Bonnie. Um, we have that verbiage embedded into our consent for treatment. So um, at any access point that the patient comes in, they're signing for um, digital or consent for digital and text. So that is going to be all the time that we have for today. I want to thank Bonnie, Stephen, and John once again for a great presentation and HBCS for sponsoring today's webinar. To learn more about the content presented today, please check out the resources section on your webinar console and please fill out the post-webinar survey. Thank you so much for joining us today and we hope you have a wonderful afternoon.